Dear friends, let us discuss The Gentleman of the Jungle, written by Yomo Kenyatta. Yomo Kenyatta was an African political leader. He was the first president of Kenya. He was one of the popular nationalist leaders and was the secretary of the Tribal Association. Through that, he made remarkable changes in the lives of the tribal people of Africa. Dear friends, let us glance at the background of the story. In the late 19th century, the European powers who were ruling the African countries divided themselves into many groups. They wanted the superior power over the African people. For that, they gave the reason that African people are not well enough educated to understand the treaties they were signing. As a result, African people lost the traditional rights on the land also. And this story, especially uh, the fable in the form of the fable, the gentleman of the jungle brings out the mindset, the opinion and the method of expansion of European people over Africans in the story. So here, the word Kikuyu, which reflects the attitude of the Kikuyu people is mentioned. Kikuyu is nothing but the ethnical group of Africa, or in other words, a group of people formed to protect the rights, which might be political, economical, and social rights of a religion or a caste. Let us see the story now. Once upon a time, an elephant made friendship with a man. So there was, uh, there was an elephant which made friendship with a man. One day, a heavy thunderstorm broke out. The elephant went to his friend who had a little hole at the edge of the forest and said to him, My dear good man, will you please let me put my trunk inside? You are hurt to keep it out of this torrential rain. So the elephant, as that was a torrential rainy day, went to the man and asked him for a help. What's the help? The elephant asked space to keep its trunk inside the hut of the man. The man, seeing what situation his friend was in, replied, My dear good elephant, my hut is very small, but there is room for your trunk and myself. Please put your trunk in gently. So the man agreed for that. Of course, he thought this is the prime duty as a friend. And he allowed that elephant to keep its trunk inside his hut. The elephant thanked his friend saying, you have done me a good deed and one day I shall return your kindness. The elephant was happy expressed his gratitude with the words that one or the other day it will definitely help the man in his need. But what followed? As soon as the elephant put his trunk inside the hut, slowly he pushed his head inside and finally flung the man out in the rain and then lay down comfortably inside the friend's hut, saying, my dear good friend, your skin is harder than mine, as a not enough room for both of us. You can afford to remain in the rain while I am protecting my delicate skin from the hailstorm. What followed? Slowly, when the man allowed the elephant to keep his trunk inside the hut, the elephant did not get satisfied with that help. Slowly, the elephant started moving inside the hut. Slowly, it put its trunk, then head, and followed by the entire whole body inside, and which made which made the man go outside, or it flung the man out of the hut by telling very special reason that, according to the elephant, man's skin is harder than the elephant's. He can afford remaining in the rain. So that it says, my skin means the elephant's skin is delicate than the man. And giving that reason, the elephant comfortably occupied the hut and settled inside. Then what happened? The man 
seeing what his friend had done to him, started to grumble. So the man started shouting, screaming, grumbling loudly. The animals in the nearby forest heard the noise and came to see what was the matter. The grumbling of that man made all the animals of the forest gather over there. All stood around listening to the heated argument between the man and his friend. There was an argument, very heated one. So all the animals started looking at them and listening to them. And then what happened? In this turmoil, so the turmoil stands for confusion. The lion came along roaring. The lion was the king of the forest, came roaring. It's an authoritative style of coming into the mat and said in a loud voice, don't you all know that I am the king of the jungle? How dare anyone disturb the peace of my kingdom? He started questioning. I am the king here and I'm very strict. Don't you know the disturbance in my kingdom will disturb me also? So that questioning that the lion entered into the sea. Next, on hearing this, the elephant who was one of the high ministers in the jungle kingdom replied in a soothing voice and said, notice, kindly notice that the position of that an animal, I mean the elephant, who was the minister of that kingdom. So the minister of the kingdom is involving in that issue. And elephant said, my lord, there is no disturbance of the peace in your kingdom. I have only been having a little discussion with my friend here as to the position of this little hut which your lordship is seeming occupied. It says, nothing is wrong in this kingdom. My dear Lord, everything is comfortable, everything is proper and systematic in your kingdom. But only the thing is, there is a small confusion or a small discussion with my friend. The lion who wanted to have peace and tranquility in his kingdom replied in a noble voice. Then the lion replied, peace and tranquility. So that lion wanted complete peace and calm situation in this kingdom. And the lion replied, I come on my ministers to appoint a commission of inquiry to go thoroughly into this matter and report accordingly. On the spot, the king of the lion ordered for the commission of inquiry. For what purpose? To inquire the matter thoroughly. He then turned to the man and said, You have done well by establishing friendship with my people, especially with the elephant who is one of my honorable ministers of the state. In fact, the lion congratulated the man for establishing the friendship with the minister of the state. Who is he? Is no one but the elephant. And said, Do not grumble anymore. Your hurt is not lost to you. Wait until the sitting of my imperial commission and there you will be given entry, so plenty of opportunity to state your case. And the lion promised the man that the man will be given enough time to produce or to present his ideas or thoughts or his views also. By this, he can expect indirectly the animal, I mean the lion is telling that he can expect impartial judgment. Imperial commission means the commission which belong to the empire, a formal commission. I'm sure that will be pleased with the findings of the commission. The lion further said, definitely the findings or the verdict of the commission will be satisfactory one and you will be pleased with that also. The man was very pleased by these sweet words from the king of the jungle. The man sincerely believed that the things will run in the similar way what the lion promised to him. So he became very happy and innocently waited for his opportunity in the belief that naturally the hurt would be returned to him. 
The man believed that any hope, I have built the hut. So it belonged to me. Then naturally, to whom does that hut belong to? Definitely, he, he thought that definitely that hut would be returned to him. He was expecting an impartial judgment from the commission of enquiry. But what followed? The elephant, obeying the command of his master, got busy with other ministers to appoint the commission of enquiry. The strange, funny thing is here that elephant is a minister, but elephant is accused in this case. But the same accused elephant got an opportunity to appoint the commission of enquiry. So can we expect an impartial judgment here? The person who is accused, who is involved in that case, is appointing the commission of enquiry. And the elephant was busy in appointing all the members of the commission. The following elders of the jungle were appointed to sit in the commission. So the members were appointed as Mr. Rhinosaurus, Mr. Buffalo, Mr. Alligator, the Right Honorable Mr. Fox uh, to act as chairman and Mr. Leopard act as secretary of the commission. So that the members of the commission were these all. So all the animals. And one more thing, dear friends, we have to observe here, the Right Honorable Mr. Fox, the RT.HON, Right Honorable, it's a uh, it's an honor given to some people. So that right honorable fox we have to call. So all the members of that commission were from the side of animals. Again, the man, by seeing the personnel, started protesting and asked if it, if, if it was not necessary to include this commission, a member from his side, started thinking about it. This commission is completely a one-sided one. No one from the man's side is in the commission. But he was told that it was impossible. But they did not agree for his proposal. They told it is not possible. Since no one from his side was well enough educated to understand the intricacy of jungle law. It is said to the man, the reason was that no one from the man's side means the human beings are not well educated to understand the intricacy, the laws of the jungle. So that it is not possible to appoint anybody. If we want to appoint somebody to that commission, they can understand, they should understand the law of the jungle. But human beings, they cannot, it is said. Here, the situation is clearly and directly mentioned to the Europeans behavior towards the Africans. Further, that there was nothing to fear for the members of the commission were all men of reputed for their impartiality in justice and as they were gentlemen chosen by God to look after the interest of raceless adequately endowed with teeth and claws, he might rest assured that they would investigate the matter with the greatest care and report impartially. Again, the people, I mean, those animals, promised that man, there is nothing to get tensed or confused. The justice will be given impartially. And those people who are appointed as the members of the commission are not common people. They are appointed by God and they are well known for the raceless adequately endowed with the teeth and claws. So that he was told that he can rest peacefully in the expectation of the impartial judgment. Here with teeth and claws, there is an idiom with teeth and claws also. But in this particular situation, the teeth and claw is referring the rules or the constitution of the jungle law. So that it is said to him that he can rest without any confusion. 
Coming back to the idiom, which is uh, with teeth and claws, which stores the similar meaning that no stone left unturned. So all possible ways of the judging of the investigation will be done by those people who are adequately accepted by the God himself. So that indirectly and the conclusion here is man is man can be kept himself calm and cool by expecting the impartial judgment only. There is nothing to worry for his side as they all are reputed personals appointed for the commission of inquiry and they are well known for their impartial judgment. What happened next? The commission sat to take the evidence. So the commission started acting as it was planned. The right honorable Mr. Elephant was first called. The first call was to the right honorable Elephant. He came along with a superior air brushing his stirs with a sampling which Mr. Elephant has provided and came in and said in authoritative words. Gentlemen of the jungle, there is no need for me to waste your valuable time in relating to a story which is which I am sure you all know. When the elephant was called, so the elephant came by brushing his teeth with an authoritative voice it started declaring its opinion see here the style of entering in front of the commission of inquiry the elephant came by brushing his tusks which means elephant was not at all serious about the inquiry of the commission it was very relaxed does not have any respect for the commission because the commission was appointed by the elephant himself and says i don't want to waste your valuable time because all you know what had taken place so that sure you all know i have always regarded it as my duty to protect the interests of my friends and this appears to have caused misunderstanding between myself and my friend here he invited me to save his foot from being blown away by a hurricane. Here, the elephant changed the entire scenario. And it assured that that elephant was well done or regarded the helping others as its prime duty. To help, I entered to the hut of the man, the elephant says. The elephant says that man himself invited me seek my help to protect the hut from blowing away from the hurricane as the hurricane had gained access over to the unoccupied space in the hut i consider it necessary in my friend's own interest to turn the undeveloped space to a more economic use by sitting in it myself so said the man invited me he called me for the help i went I thought the hut was unoccupied. As we know, air occupies spaces. If the hut is unoccupied, then of course the hurricane, the wind occupy the hut and which can easily blown away. So that to protect it on even the own interest of my friend, who is he? He is that man. I entered inside it and sat myself. A duty which any one of you would undoubtedly have performed with equal readiness in similar circumstances. And his further says, of course, you people undoubtedly do the same thing if you were in that situation. So my action is completely related to the welfare or helping to that man. Then, after hearing the Right Honorable Mr. Elephant's conclusive evidence, the commission called Mr. Hanna and other elders of the gender who were all supported what Mr. Elephant had said. They then called the man who began to give his own account of dispute, but the commission cut him short. After hearing the statement of Right Honorable Elephant, 
the commission called other evidences also before they called the man because they wanted to conclude the man without the statement or opinion of the man and at last they called the man for the name sake then the man started giving the account of his own because what the elephant told what other evidence is told was completely wrong or not the factual then he started his own opinion but the commission was not ready to listen to that man the commission cut him short saying my good man please confine yourself to relevant issues we have already heard the circumstances from various and biased sources we all we wish you to tell whether the undeveloped space in your hut was occupied by anyone else before mr elephant assumed his position so only one question was asked to the man kindly control yourself but he was ordered then he was asked only one question just let us know whether the undeveloped space inside the hut was occupied by anybody else before the entry of the elephant but what the man should say definitely he could say that no but he started but at this point the commission again they cut him short and declared that they had heard sufficient evidence from both sides and retired to consider the decision the decision was fixed before only so that they have started they have retired means they consider that everything is over in that bat after enjoying a delicious meal at the expense of the right honorable mr elephant the rich the world called the man and declared as follows say so called the man before that they had a delicious meal which was provided by the right honorable elephant was accused in fact was the person to be punished the delicious meal was of course that was probably the gift for the commission of enquiry for their verdict which was in favor of the elephant completely injustice one and the declaration i mean the verdict was in our opinion this dispute has arisen through a regrettable misunderstanding due to the backwardness of your ideas the blame the man only you are not well enough educated to understand the intricacy of the jungle laws now you are backwardness of ideas we consider that mr elephant has fulfilled his sacred duty of protecting your interests and the one who is the real criminal or the accused was made a sacred personality through the verdict as it is clearly for your good that the space should be put to its most economic use and as you yourself have not yet reached the stage of expansion which would enable you to fit it we consider it necessary to arrange a compromise with both parties and again they further said as you are unable to occupy or use the entire hut you are very small you can't occupy the entire hut so it is necessary in the future again to protect the hut and we should go for a proper arrangement or a verdict what was that mr elephant shall continue his occupation of your hut so they have announced that man could not able to protect his head hut so that the elephant entered elephant protected that hut and of course in the future also the main uh, the the same situation may occur to prevent to protect the hut it is better it should be kept with the elephant only so that the hut should be given to the elephant only but we give you permission to to look for a site where you can build another hut more suited to your needs and we will see that you are well protected they are promising also the man that he will be protected by the 
but this hut according to them is little bigger than his needs which he could not protect himself so that he would be given another site in the forest wherever he want he can build another hut which is useful for him but this hut which is present will be given to the favor of or will be given to animal only i mean the elephant the man having no alternative and fearing that his refusal might expose him to teeth and claws of members of the commission man was fear he thought that if i argue for their verdict definitely which leads them to take another action and they may not allow me to live in this forest without having any alternative he has done as was suggested but no sooner had he built another hut as per the suggestion of the commission he started building new huts and he built another hut mr rhinoceros charged in with his own load and order the man to build the rhinoceros entered by lowering piece making down its horns and entered the hut and ordered the man to build as it was happened in the previous time a royal commission was again appointed to look into the matter and the same findings were given again the same thing occurred same process again the animals decided the hut should be occupied by the rhinoceros only nobody else again he was said to build another hut wherever he wanted this procedure was repeated until mr buffalo mr leopard mr hyena and the rest of the uh, jungles were all accommodated with new huts the same thing occurred and continued until all the minister all the reputed people of the jungle accommodated with each of the hut then the man decided to decided the man now is exhausted of this kind of activities and he decided he must adopt an effective method of protection since commissions of inquiry did not seem to be of any use to him he decided to find a very special way of treating as the inquiry commissions are not of his use they are prefixed their wordings so that what he decided he sat down and said entati neginda motegi a different word it might be a tribal people's language of african countries which literally means there is nothing that trades on the earth that cannot be trapped which means which means that you can fool people for a time but not forever you people are fooling me every time but it's not possible every time now i'm going to find a very different way to treat you to teach you a lesson early one morning when the herds already occupied by the jungle lords were all beginning to decay and fall off pieces so all the jungle lords were sitting resting under the hut resulted in some such kind of skin diseases started suffering from such kind of diseases and he went out and built a bigger and better hut a little distance away finally he did not build a small hut he built a bigger hut near the same forest no sooner had mr rhino sir seen it has he came rushing in only to find that mr elephant was already inside sound asleep when the when the rhinoceros noticed that he had built a new hut rushed very fastly towards that but surprise of surprises that elephant was already resting sound asleep inside the hut mr leopard next came in at the window mr lion mr fox and mr buffalo entered the rooms while mr hyena howled for a place in the shade and mr alligator boxed on the roof so all these animals occupied their comfortable places inside the hut 
and the alligator positioned itself or rested itself on the Guru path. Presently, they all began disputing about the rights of penetration and from disputing they came to fight. Now, when he built separate small small huts, huts they were occupying each other and satisfied. This is the biggest one, but they are not satisfied with the position they got. Started fighting each other when they all are busy when fighting each other. What happened? While they were all embroiled together, the man, so they all embroiled, they were busy in the fighting to get the economic space or the comfortable place in the hut. The man thought this is the right time to act. And what he did? The man set the hut on fire and burnt it to the ground. He thought this is the exact time to act. He brought and he set the hut on fire, burnt it on. So all the jingle lords and all, they all died. Then he went home saying, peace is costly, but it is worth the expense and lived happily ever after. With the thought, he left that place and lived happily. Peace is costly, but it's worth the expense. Finding peace in this world is quite difficult for we human beings because we have so many complicated things to do. We have our needs, we have our responsibilities, we have so many different poisoned minds around us. So in this kind of a competitive world, it's very difficult to find the peace. So we have to practice. We have to find the ways of being peaceful life, of getting the peaceful life. But once we find it, finding is very difficult. Peace or a peaceful life is equal to a dream. It needs our dedication, hard work, and so many things. But if you put those all the efforts to get the peaceful life, it has that worth. With this thought, the man went out and lived happily. And this fable ends with the same. Dear friends, in this fable, all the things related to the behavior of European people and the approach of African people for that expansion is discussed. Hope you have enjoyed. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.